Depending on the material and what you rub it with, different objects gain different types of charges. Try this at home. When you rub a glass rod with a wool cloth, you notice that if you bring another rubbed glass rod close to it, they will repel. However, if you bring it close to a rubbed rubber balloon, they will attract each other. Yet, both of these rods attract paper pieces. From this, we can conclude that there are at least two types of charges, called positive and negative. Despite extensive investigations, no one has yet found an object that, when rubbed, can either attract or repel both a rubbed glass rod and a rubbed rubber balloon. And thus we say that um, there are two types of charges. Of course, now we know that charges come about from the transfer of electrons. We can say that a positively charged object is one that has some electrons removed, while a negatively charged object is one with some electrons added. But this was not so obvious before. What about paper bits? Don't they count as a third type of charge? The thing is, paper bits by themselves don't attract each other. They only get attracted when a charged object is nearby. This suggests that a char nearby charged object does something such that the paper object is attracted. It turns out that a nearby positively charged object would attract electrons to the closer side of the paper, making the closer side negatively charged and the further side positively charged. As we will see later, the force between two charges decreases with distance. And since the negative side is closer to the positive charge, there will be an overall attractive force. You can see that the converse is true if you put a negative charge near a small piece of paper, explaining why paper bits get attracted by both positive and negative charges. Far from any charges, the electrons will be evenly distributed across the paper, so it is overall neutral and will exert no forces on other paper bits. These two types of charges are known as positive or negative. But the naming of these types of charges could very well have been blue and red, but it so happens that historically they were named positive and negative. It's somewhat unfortunate that positive was named as such, because now we know that charges are transferred by electrons, which we call negatively charged, and so the flow of charges is usually from negative to positive. This is uh, quite different from what we think, and it's quite confusing. However, since we've used this way of labeling charges for many centuries, it would be confusing to suddenly change it, and so we'd rather bear with this minor issue.